Hello everyone and welcome to another video. So this time I'm going to talk a little bit about the pin to drive option which is new since software update 32.4 I believe. Uh, some are getting it with update 34 but uh, yeah it's still the same thing. Um, so basically what it does it adds a level of security to your uh, to your car. Every time you start to drive you have to uh, enter a four digit pin on a pin pad that appears on the center screen um, and you can set that and uh, of course when you forget it you can also reset it using your password uh, for your Tesla account uh, in case you don't remember it anymore um, so that's that's a good thing um, and for most people that is uh, a good solution because it avoids the um, key fob extender uh, method of stealing the car supposedly um, because yeah they can still open the car by extending the, the key fob signal but once they get in the car they can't leave because yeah I mean you have to enter the pin code so in essence it seems like a good thing however I do have some concerns about it uh, or some thoughts about it uh, in, in ways in which it can be improved. So let me first show you how this works. So enabling the pin to drive is uh, fairly easy. So you go to uh, controls down here, then you go to settings, safety and security, and then you have pin to drive here. So once you enable it, you have to create a digital pin. So let's take one, two, three, four, enable, and now my pin is one two three four you see it's enabled here so uh, when i try to start the car by pressing on the brake uh, i will get the uh, pin and then i have to I have to enter the pin code to uh, be able to uh, allow and now i can put the car as you can hear i can put the car in drive now there is um, uh, a slight problem. Well, problem, it's not a problem, but you have to keep that in mind. Because if you want to turn it off, you also have to enter the pin. One, two, three, four. Disable. It's a one-time thing. So you set the pin, and then it keeps being the same. So for example, if I turn it on again, then it asks me for a pin. So the first time I saw this, I was like, okay, so every time you have to you turn it on, you choose a new pin. So let's take uh, 2580 and it doesn't accept that so it only accepts the original uh, pin so that means that if you want to uh, erase your pin number then you have to enter your Tesla credentials on the car and then you can reset the pin number so now you've seen how easy it is. So every time you get in the car, you get that screen, you enter your pin code, you tap allow, and then you can drive. However, because the pin pad is always in the same place, then if, if your screen is not used that much, as I think most people don't use it that much, um, then uh, the fingerprints will indicate which numbers that you use so still have a lot of combinations to get through but the car doesn't give you like a, an error message or it doesn't lock the car after three attempts or whatever so you can keep trying and trying and trying until you get the right um, the right pin number to uh, to start the car so I think Tesla could improve there by varying uh, the location of the pin pad on the screen randomly and that should avoid being able to detect which pin or which numbers you used for that uh, for that pin pad. Now, as another thought that I had, and, and actually I experienced it, uh, is when I took my car to service, I was driving it around with the pin code enabled for a couple of days. And then I had to take it to service. I dropped off my key. Uh, luckily, I was waiting for my car uh, at the service center. I didn't just drop it off and then took off in a loaner. They uh, wanted to take the car in and then they came back to me and said like, uh, could you please enter your pin code? So, probably, I think, I need to check that with the service center and we're going to test that like next week or something. Um, or if anybody already 
uh, experienced that please comment in 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 the comments uh, below but um, I would suspect that if they put the car in service mode before they pick it up to drive it inside then uh, the pin code would be disabled for them because otherwise even if I give them the pin code in the morning and they want to move the car once it's inside the building um, they still have to call me can you give me your pin again and then it's just not me or me not just giving uh, or entering the pin code it's me giving my pin code so then I have to change it again and each and every time blah 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 so yeah just not user friendly uh, in that way so my suspicion is that once the car is in service mode and I guess it wasn't yet at that point then uh, the pin code will be uh, overruled and they can just drive it uh, without the pin code Another thought that I had is what happens if um, you enter the car and um, you forgot your key or you do the, 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 the keyless driving thing where you start a car with your smartphone, right? Does it work there? Uh, so let's try that and see what, what it does. So I said now I've entered my car without the key in my pocket so I can enable keyless driving so that means I will enter my uh, password and once I hit start I get two minutes to start the car at that point so let's see what it does when I enter my password and then we uh, try to start the car so I'm not once I press start Keyless driving enabled, okay. I press the brake pedal, yeah, and the car just starts. So if you use keyless driving, then the whole system gets uh, gets bypassed. And that's a little bit of a security flaw, I think. I think they should still enable the pin uh, and that even provides a double protection. So if you don't have the security of having the key then it's still your password that is that needs to be secure of course but once you enter the password it just uh, skips the whole pin thing and I think that uh, is not a good thing and I think for me personally it should still show the pin pad at that point as well oh yeah and one last thing that I uh forgot to mention that is that the uh, the pin code is actually enabled for the car and not for the key fob so I used a different key fob this time to get into the car and it still shows me that uh, pin pad once I try to start the car so it's not in the driver profile to have that pin so it's a security for the car you either enable it or disable it but it's not a user profile thing so yeah, now you know how the pin works and what the quirks are uh, with the system. So I think there's still a little bit of improving to do. Um, but yeah, it's already uh, an additional safety feature. I've been driving around with it for a couple of days. Um, I'm still doubting whether or not I will keep it. Uh, I mean, it's always a thin line between additional security and uh, actual yeah, usability because it is quite annoying on the one hand to just enter the pin code uh, each and every time you want to drive the car uh, but I guess it's kind of a habit thing uh, that that's that will grow on me uh, once I use it for a couple of weeks but uh, yeah we'll see but uh, yeah as always uh, if you like my video please like it and subscribe to the channel by clicking on that button and the little bell I can so you don't miss out on any new videos and for now thanks for watching and see you guys next time bye bye